lesson two, I will represent tenths as fractions and decimals. So we are going to continue talking about what we talked about in lesson two. The only difference is today, we're going to talk about what happens when you have more than one whole. In lesson one, we only talked about numbers that were less than one whole. Everything was five tenths, five tenths. But in the real world, you don't always have numbers and fractions and decimals that are less than one. Sometimes your numbers and decimals are greater than one. So today, we're going to talk about what happens when your numbers are greater than one. Okay, so today you're going to need this lesson two template. And I know this is really small, but I want you to be able to see what it looks like, okay? So you can see that it looks, it has these five squares on the side. And we're going to kind of use this instead of our journal. So I want you to go ahead and get this out. And you're also going to need to go get a ruler. So go find a ruler. It's If you're at school, it is over by the telephones. You'll find a ruler. I want you to get that ruler, and then I want you to come back. Okay, so you can see that I have a ruler up here. Your ruler's not going to look exactly like mine. Your ruler is going to have inches on one side and centimeters on the other. Now the inch side is going to go from 0 to 12. You don't want that side today. Today we want the metric side. It goes from 0 to 33, I think, or something in the 30s. That's the side that you want. Now what I want you to do is I want you to use your pencil and I want you to draw me a line segment. Okay, I want you to draw me a line segment from 0 to 2. And then I want you to move your ruler over just a little bit. And I want you to draw me a line segment that is 6 tenths. So remember that each of these little marks is a tenth, just like on a number line, okay? So if we start at zero and we count over six, we will have six tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Then you can move your ruler out of the way. Now that we have our ruler out of the way, let's label what we have drawn here, okay? So we have two centimeters, and then here we have six tenths of a centimeter. So as a mixed number, if I added two centimeters to six tenths of a centimeter, I would write it like this, right? Two and six tenths centimeters. This is what we did in module five. But now if I'm going to write this as a decimal, here's what it would look like. Two and six tenths centimeter. It's read exactly like this mixed number. The only difference is instead of writing this fraction, I'm going to write this decimal. Okay, now we talked about how you can represent a decimal that's greater than one whole using centimeters. Now we're going to talk about how you can represent a decimal that's greater than one using an area model. So you can see that I've turned the paper sideways, and I want you to do that as well. Turn your paper sideways so that all of your boxes are going horizontally instead of vertically. All right, so let's look at your area model template. How many rectangles do we have in a row? We have one, two, three, four, five. So each, repre each rectangle represents one hole. So how many ones or how many holes do we have? Well, we have five. Each rectangle has been partitioned equally. How many tenths are there in all? So if this is 10, and this is 10, and this is 10, and this is 10, and this is 10. How many tenths are there in all? 50. So we have 50 tenths. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 tenths. Five holes, 50 tenths. Okay, so let's take a look at this mixed number. I have two and six tenths. How many ones are there in this number? There are two ones. So let's shade in two ones on your template. So if I'm going to shade in two ones or two holes, I've got to shade in two whole boxes. So I want you to shade in two whole boxes just like I am. Hopefully you'll do yours a little neater than I am. I'm just kind of doing it fast. Okay, so shade in two whole boxes. You can shade it really lightly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's not spend forever coloring. All right, so if we're going to represent two and six tenths, how many tenths do we still need to shade in? Well, we still need to shade in six tenths. So now I want you to take your highlighter and I want you to shade in six tenths. Okay, so I've got two holes, 
and one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. So as a number bond, that would look like this, two and six tenths, okay? So if I wanted to rewrite two and six tenths using decimal form to add the tenths, what would it look like? It would look like this, right? So instead of two plus six tenths as a fraction, it would look like two plus six tenths as a decimal, and it would look like this, two and six tenths. If I wanted to use a number bond to represent this in decimal form, it would look like this, two and six tenths, and then over here I'd have my whole number, two, and then over here I'd have my decimal, 0.6. Okay, so it's just like our mixed numbers with our fractions, except every time we wrote six tenths, we wrote it as a decimal instead of a fraction. Okay, so we're going to practice both of these strategies in our problem set today. So let's go ahead and move on to our problem set. And you're going to notice that it says, for each length given below, draw a line segment to match. Express each measurement as an equivalent mixed number. So we're going to need that centimeter ruler that you had out before, okay? So go ahead and if you put it up, you're going to need to go and get that. And then we're going to be drawing some numbers, okay, or some lines, excuse me. Okay, so you're going to notice that I've got out my, my metric ruler. This is not to scale, so your line may look different on your paper than mine. You just make sure that you're going from the same numbers that I am. All right, so we're going to start with 2.6, which is kind of funny because this is what we just did in, on our, um, our template, isn't it? So I'm going to start at 0, but this time I'm going to make it all one line. So I'm going to go all the way from 0 to 2. There's 2, and then I'm going to go over 6 tick marks till I get to right here. So that is 2.6 centimeters. Okay, now it says express each measurement as an equivalent mixed number. Okay, so a mixed number means using a fraction. So we're going to write it like this. Here's our line segment, and we're going to express it 2 and 6 tenths. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's try another one. Okay, so this time we're going to do 3 and 4 tenths. So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go all the way to 3. So there's the 3 hole, and then we're going to go over 4 tenths, and then we're going to write that as a mixed number. So how would you write 3 and 4 tenths as a mixed number? Well, you would write it like this, right? Here's 3 and 4 tenths. Okay, so now let's do 3 and 7 tenths. I think you're probably getting the hang of it. All right, so we're going to start at 0 and go all the way to 3, and then we're going to go over 7 tick marks. And then stop, and then we're going to write that as a mixed number. That would look like this, 3 and 7 tenths. See if you can't do the last two by yourself, and then come back and check. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you did this all by yourself. So check and make sure that your line starts at zero and goes all the way to four, and then you went over two tick marks. So that's four and two tenths. So let's see if you wrote it like this, four and two tenths. Anytime you see a decimal, it is perfectly appropriate to say and. So you'll notice I keep saying four and two tenths because that's exactly what you should say whenever you have a decimal or a mixed number. All right, so now I'm going to do two and five centimeters. So two and five tenths. So I'm going to go all the way to the two and then stop at the fifth tick mark past the two or halfway between the two and three, however you want to look at it. And then I'm going to write two and five tenths. Okay. All right, now you're going to see this is pretty similar to what we did on our area template. We've got some area models, and we're going to represent two ones and six tenths. It says write the following as equivalent decimals, then model and rename the number as shown below. So you can see they started with the fraction, and then they broke the fraction apart into whole number plus fraction, and then they changed that to whole number plus decimal, and they ended up with their whole number and decimal. Okay, so two ones and six tenths equals two and six tenths, and we're going to shade 
2 and 6 tenths. So 2 holes. So that means we're going to share 2 whole boxes. This represents 1, 2, and then I'm going to shade 6 tenths of the next one. So 2, 4, 6. I can kind of do 2 at a time here. Okay, so 2 and 6 tenths. Okay, see if you can't do this one by yourself. I bet you can. At least go ahead and see if you can't shade 4 and 2 tenths by yourself and then come back and let's check together. Okay, so you can see that I shaded 1, 2, 3, 4 whole boxes and 2 tenths of another box. So if I'm going to write that the way that they wrote it, so I've got 4 and 2 tenths as a fraction. That's going to be the same thing as 4 plus 2 tenths. So as a decimal that would be 4 plus 2 tenths and when I put that together I have 4 and 2 tenths. Okay? Alright, let's try C. Again, I want you to pause the video and see if you can't do this all by yourself and then come back. So let's pause the video. At least draw the model by yourself. If you have trouble doing this number sentence, I bet you can change this from fraction to decimal form pretty easily. But just look at mine and I bet you can do this part by yourself too. So pause the video and let's come back and see how you do. Okay, so you can see that I have shaded one two, three whole boxes, and one, two, three, four out of ten of the other box. So that's three and four tenths. So now as a decimal that looks like this, three and four tenths. So if I separate my whole number from my fraction, I have three plus four tenths. And if I change it to a decimal, I have three plus, and again this is just red four tenths, it just looks a little bit different. And then I put that together, I have three and four tenths. So it looks like this, three and four tenths. Okay, let's take a look at D. All right, so the only thing that's different here is it says how much more is needed to get to five. I want you to go ahead and do all of this by yourself and see if you can answer this question by yourself. How much more is needed to get to five? And then after you think you have the answer, let's come back and look together. Okay, so you can see that I've shaded one, two whole boxes, and then five tenths of the other box, okay? All right, so for this one, we would say two and five tenths equals two plus five tenths. So as a fraction, that would be, or excuse me, as a decimal, that would be two plus five tenths equals two and five tenths. So how much more would you need to get to five? Well, how much more would you need here? Well, here you would need five tenths, and then here you would need, how much is this? Two holes. So if you put that together, you would need two and five tenths. And I would think that it would be okay if you said or two and five tenths, because it doesn't say to say it in decimal form. So if you put that in fraction form, like a mixed number, or if you put it in decimal form, either one would be correct. All right, so let's try to do E all by ourselves. Now they're trying to trick you here a little bit. You notice it says 37 tenths. They're really trying to stretch your brain to see if you can figure that out. I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out what they're asking there, and then let's come back and check together. Okay, so did you get tricked or did you figure this out? I bet you figured it out. So if you think about how many boxes are in each, in each area model, each hole. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 7. So what would that be as a mixed number? Well, if you look at it really closely, you see three holes, 1, 2, 3, and then 7 tenths of another one. So 37 tenths is the same thing as 3 and 7 tenths. So that's 3 plus 7 tenths, which equals 3 plus 7 tenths, that's not like a broken record, equals 3 and 7 tenths. Okay, so how much more would you need to get to 5? Well, how much more would you need to get a hole here? Well, this is 3 tenths, and this is 1 hole. So 1 and 3 tenths, or 1 and 3 tenths, okay? All right, so today we learned how to represent a decimal that's greater than one whole. And I hope that you had fun with this because I always think this is kind of fun. And I think decimals are really pretty simple once you've already learned the fraction because it means the exact same thing, which I think makes it really convenient.